Good afternoon, and welcome to Splitting Hairs, the video series where I showcase my art journey, the ups and downs, and everything in between. This episode is episode zero, or the pilot episode, called Dry Run. I started relatively late in the month, so there isn't going to be that much to discuss. It's a short video. We're going to see if this works, and yeah, let's just get to it. So, I started off with some gesture drawings, 90 second gesture drawings. All of these are terrible. They're functional. They're good for, like, I can see how I can take these and make drawings out of them, but a lot of them are just terrible. I'm happy with this lady on the left. On the far left, the lady. This one with, it has like a cat tail. This one, this one dude with a T posing, that's kind of neat. And... I think that's about it. Oh, 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 this one crouching isn't that bad either. But yeah, this isn't... These are pretty bad and I'm not very happy with them. So, at the time I was also disappointed in myself and I thought, hey, why don't I at least turn them into something just using my visual memory? You know, are these still useful? And I took a stab at it. So... This lady turned into like some sort of jumpsuit wearing lady. And since a lot of these I never got to draw the heads, I was able to just draw miscellaneous objects. Uh, this is a little bit of Yume Nikki seeping in. This is the the lady that was wearing this was wearing like some cat sleeves, so I just made her into a cat outright. And I, I kind of just had fun with the weird faces and it's something i want to revisit i honestly enjoy these weird heads there's a cat guy on the far left these two fighter guys um this girl with like the i draw like a squiggle and it's like oh this kind of looks like a mouth growling so i picture like she's some sort of yokai and she has like a fangs on the back of her head beerus looking dude This lady with the... I kind of like... Kind of looks like Smash. Uh, this guy whose face I made sort of, sort of humanoid. But I wanted to sort of make him also look kind of alien-ish. And then from here on out, I changed the setting on my brush because I wanted to see if I could do something more crisp. And that led me to getting frustrated, which is... This one was bad. Like, it lost a lot of the form, and it just got very bubbly. Worse. This one was okay, but I was starting to get... This one was, was one of the first ones, so I started to get very frustrated. I redrew the hand in black, and I left the original one in red. I don't know why I did that. I think it was to show that, oh, this is the original, which was bad, and I made it better. That's debatable. I did a bunch of squiggles, so I was very frustrated and oh, yeah good bad of course and this is the last figure i did where it's just twisty and i took the original figure turning and just made him into like some thing he looks like he looks like um the guy from i have no mouth and i must scream then I also started working on the protagonists of my Transient Images project. We started with Mime here, or Mem. I looked up a uh, Paleo Hebrew for this, and instead of just using the actual Hebrew letters, which I felt were a little bit too ornate, also hard to write, I chose the Paleo Hebrew because they broke down easily. So I took the letters and I s divided them into shapes, and the shapes became the markings in the face. Oh, uh, I was ta I was um, on a call with uh, acquaintance Alpaki, and <laughs> um, he joked that, "Oh, you should copy. Um, you should." Uh, tell Sankra about the face triangles. It's like a thing he does. And it's like, oh, that's right. It is, isn't it? 
I was thinking of one of his nurse characters, but... And she has different markings. They look more like cheekbones. Oh, um, these were some of my influences. Uh, Minbit. I think I think they animated for um, Monkey King or Monkey Kid is a show. Javi Game Boy and Plumy, all good artists in there, right? Oh, yeah, and this is where I used the brush again, but I changed some settings to make it more palatable and it's working i left and i left i was i did the little thing to see if i had a shape language i thought it was rounded edges but honestly i don't think that's it also working on how to get more compact arm hands where it's all contained within one shape or at least the less shapes, the more why I think this is something that Ingres said, uh, the artist uh, Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. Why make things out of three little forms when you could just make it out of one big one? That's kind of the mentality I have going on here. Um, this is the thing that Aleph uses to ride in this, uh, since he manipulates air. I'll get to that later, but this is very... I think I just took this one-to-one -one from the last airbender. I might have to change it, but... It's such a good design, but yeah, it is from Avatar. Uh, and then the third of the of the triplets, Tav or Tav, he has no tail and he's blind. And here's the three of them: Maim or Mem, Aleph, and Tav. Uh, Tav is an Earthbender or manipulates Earth. I don't think Earthbender is copyright. copyrighted, I hope it's not. Um, Mem, who manipulates water, and Aleph, who can manipulate wind. And this snake head was... I was getting a little frustrated, and what was originally here was certain, another one squ squiggle, but it looked like a snake, so I drew a snake, sure. Oh, and... To conclude the night, I had done some automatic drawing, and the drawing turned into like a buff dude. And I was with Alpaki, and Alpaki said, Oh, that looks like a diglet. And of course, I turned it into a diglet. Uh. Oh, these are some explorations of some color explorations of uh, a character called Saint Pupsy or Saint Pup Clementine. He's the patron saint of postmodernism. I thought it would just be like the wackiest idea to have something that rejects the grand narratives be it be in it of itself a grand narrative and it's about capitalism of all things. Um also hearkening back to the cynocephaly or the dog people. I tested out some various colors. I think I ended up somewhere between the Third one here, third one to the right, the middle one here with the really deep red and blue, and this middle one at the bottom that has like the glowy face. I think that's a good thing to carry on to the final design. And then speaking of Alpaki, uh, Alpaki had posted this picture for reference studies, and I really like the material, so I try to do my own take on it. It The drawing went to shit, but... It's, it carries it. I mean, it still looks like it. If I blur my eyes and take like seven steps back, it looks like it. I can definitely do better though. This style really isn't for me. I don't know if I should keep leaning into this. It's been a while. And I think this might be the last page. Uh, like I said, it was going to be short. Uh, speaking of colors, I was doing some color style techniques to see which one I could, which one was better looking and which one I wanted to use more for my work in the future. Uh, this one on the far left is just flats, just color flats. It's very easy to do and it's super quick to do. Like, barely takes me, I think, less than five minutes. It's not very appealing. It's 
you know, it's the bare minimum you could do. It's sort of like, a, okay, it might have worked for 1010, but it definitely doesn't work anymore. And it's okay, like, it's quality. You put the colors in, good for you. I think it, nowadays people expect a little more than just flats. So that's why I put the quality so low. Still, 10 out of 16, that's not bad. That's more than half. Then this is my painty style, the second one inspired by the likes of Marco Bucci. It's the most artsy one, and I dare I say the most expressive one, but it also, it feels very, it can lend itself to being too gimmicky. <clears throat> it's not easy to do. I mean, not as easy. It's still a little bit easy because I'm used to doing it, but also you have to like color weave colors together, like a little bit of red here, a little blue, blue here, and white. It gives unity, some semblance of unity, but other than that, it's just very hard to do. It is not quick at all. It might be easy, but it's not quick because it's a lot of rep repetition of the same thing. So that, that got dropped down to zero. It's a little more appealing. I definitely prefer seeing the, uh, this one instead of the quality one. Um, it's not quality one. I, seeing this one instead of the flat one. Like if this would, um, the painting one would say, oh, the person put in some effort. Um, so it's still a little better. Though the fact that it lost so much speed and ease does put it lower than the flats one. So it's <laughs> overall it's a it's kind of funny it's better to not do anything at all than to do this so that's why i stopped doing that style then there's the rounding style which i call rounding because it's sort of rounding up the forms with airbrush this one i hate a lot i did it for a while there's some people that can do it well but to me it just comes off as lazy i've seen many artists that just spray the edges and call it done and they don't even consider it feels like they're not committing it's too trivial it's too it feels like you're actually making the drawing worse which is why and it's also not it's not that hard to do but eh, it's also it's not that hard to do but it does also take a lot of time because you're thinking about oh what's the form what's the general thing i think this actually loses any appeal it's worse and the quality looks worse because this looks like some sort of half-assed attempt at shading. So the lowest score out of all of them. Just no gaining anything at all. Then uh, Tawog, or The Amazing World of Gumball style. I looked at some Gumball, particularly the later seasons, where they really amped up the post-production. And I liked what they had. They did like a little rim thing. That you don't even have to draw just by doing a mask offset you can get this lighter tone and maybe insert some gradients inside just like a quick gradient to imply some sort of shadow definition i think it's neat it's super quick to do it's just as quick to do as the original just as fast it does make it a little bit more appealing since there's like a source of light and it's does gain in quality. Not by much, but since I'm emulating a TV show, it will be more quality. So, net gain. Nothing is lost. Uh, then there's the Gilded Age style here in the middle. I'm taking influence from many Gilded Age illustrators, such as JC Liondecker and the like, where I'll put in like flats. He used to do this with Terps, just really flat, vibrant shadows. And then take a brush and brush in the lights um start with the middle start in the middles and then add your darkest dark and your lightest lights last it's not that easy to do um it's also not that fast i do think it gives it a uh, sort of handmade appeal in the painting that's good and it does give it a little bit more quality i don't think i could pull this off as well I would need more brushes and more investment in this. For something that I need to be doing really quickly, it's not really that flexible either. So it gets like a 9 out of 16, which eh, still better than the painty one. 
Um, and then the last one is clear line style, which is the one I've been doing the most recently. I feel like this one just captures a really good sense of quality. The Those lines are doing a lot of heavy lifting. It gives like a sense of finality. It's like you didn't just put that shadow in by mistake. It's actually drawn in. And I like that. I will say it's, I mean, it is easy to do because you just need to follow the shadows and nothing more. It gives it so much. Um, it's still relatively fast. No, not as faster as the flats, of course. Um, I think it great gives it good appeal, a good amount of appeal. There's something about having something be so decisive. It's either a yes or a no that I really enjoy. And this one is the most quality, in my opinion. Because I'm, I'm taking from an illustrator, Kogisha, which, or Kogicha, which, honestly, I love their work. So, I guess I'm also taking from those uh, pop artists of the 90s um, in Japan, which, honestly, a good thing to do. So, I ended up also with a 13 out of 16. So, I'm stuck between the amazing world of Gumball and Clearline. In the gumball style, all of the work is done in post, and I don't really have to worry about the lighting until later on. That being said, I feel like it can turn gimmicky if I'm not careful. Uh, it can start being... it can turn negligible. I feel like it'll turn into a version of the round style where you're actually making it worse by adding these things. It does give a nice sense of unity, but it's quicker, and it's quicker, but it runs the risk of becoming cliche. It's also not that flexible. In the clear line style, I have to worry about the lighting information from the very beginning, but since it's part of the drawing, I can also fudge it a little. This is sort of half design, half shadow. It doesn't all have to be exact, it can just... I can use the shapes to play into it. I'm not really aiming for realism here, I'm just aiming for appeal. And some sense of dimensionality, so... I put in... I give in a little bit of... I lose a little bit of time, and it's not as easy. But I gain a lot more. And it's, a li it's very hard for this to become cliche, because... It's drawing information, it's not tacked on, it's baked into the drawing. Hell, I can even imply some shading without even putting color in, so that's kind of neat. So, right now I feel like I'm going to lean into the clear line style. And, yeah, this is the last page. I think I'll just end it here, and... Thank you for watching.